Hi, welcome again. So, in this lesson, we will learn about data flow analysis. So, earlier lesson, we talked about control flow analysis, how to look at a source code and find potential problems with the control flow design of a program. Now, we will focus on learning how to find problems of data flow design inside a program. If you look at a program, what is a program? In a simplistic sense, a program is nothing but a set of data and a logic that can manipulate the data. So, we define a lot of variables and variables during the execution of the code, they will have their own life cycle and we have to analyze that life cycle because sometimes programmers make some mistakes with respect to wrong kind of data flow design and those kind of things can create anomalous situations or sometimes faulty situations. That is what we will be learning. So, data flow analysis, what is it? It is nothing but the study of variables inside a program. So, whenever you define or declare a variable, what happens? Your compiler will provide a memory location where a data of whatever type can be stored and that variable using its name can be referenced in code and the control flow can manipulate the data. That is what we call variables and study of how this data is being defined, used and killed inside a program. So, we have to carefully consider the life cycle of variables within the execution paths of a particular program. So, we use a few abbreviations when a data variable is defined. So, what is being defined? We are declaring it, what type of that and then we are assigning a particular value to that. Then we are telling a variable is being defined inside a program and that variable using few instructions, if it is being used to make some decision about that or calculate something from that, then we are telling that that variable is being used and once the program ends, the scope of the variable will be over and we tell that variable is killed, meaning the memory location no longer available to the code. So, variables through the program execution, they will be defined, meaning they will be given some values and they will be used and they will be killed and there is a proper sequence paths that have to happen. That is what we call define usage sequence paths and we have to analyze them and some sequence paths are good, some sequence paths can create anomaly and some sequence paths of define and usage will be problems. So, we have to carefully analyze that and find defects. That is what we do as data flow study. In fact, Again, the data flow analysis can be automatically done by the static analysis tools, but even as knowledgeable people, we can also look at a piece of source code and analyze and find potential mistakes. But if you consider large code with thousands of lines, then it becomes tedious for human beings, but it is okay for a tool. But because we are learning static analysis by tools, let us learn to do manually so that you understand the concept of data flow analysis as a professional ISTQB certified tester. So, on your screen you have a piece of source code. So, here let us who what are the variables? There is a variable called total and it has been defined, it has been assigned a value called 0 and another variable called counter, count again it is a variable it has been defined. Then number is another variable being defined by reading from outside. So, it is again number is being defined there. Then if you look at from a while statement there, number is greater than or equal to 0, do something we are telling. So, that is where the number is being used and like that you have more variables. There is a count, there is average, all these are variables inside your program and study of these variables is called data flow study. So, for this logic, 
on the screen you will see now the control flow graph of this how the flow of execution is happening now what we have to do is that we have to take each of these variables and analyze through the flow of the execution of the program and what is happening where it is being defined where it is being used where it is being killed and what is the cycle let us understand that so let us take the first variable called the total so what is happening when total equal to 0 the total is being defined now once it entering the while loop total is equal to total plus number that is where total is being used and also being defined because in the after equal to it is being used but it is getting a different value after adding number so total inside the while loop is also being used and defined at the same time then after it comes out of the loop again total is being used to calculate average then once the program ends it will get killed so that is how the life cycle of this variable called total is happening so now let us look at the variable called count what is happening in the initial stage it is being defined at the line number 2 now once inside the while loop again count is being incremented so count is being used and being redefined there then once within the outside of the while loop in the average calculation again count is being used so the variable if you look at the life cycle of the variable count within the execution of this source code it is being defined after that it is being used again defined and used and then ultimately being killed then let us look at the number in the line number three number is being defined and in the while loop the number is being used and again within the while loop number is being redefined and then at the end of the program it is being killed so that is how we have to analyze each variable inside the program and what is happening to that so similarly for average what is happening average has been defined after the while loop first time and then it is being used in the print average statement and then end of the program it is being killed so at the end of the program it is being defined through a calculation and then it is being used in a print statement and then it is being killed so we have carefully looked at every variable inside the program and tried to understand its how the life cycle of the variable is being done now let us look at what we call this define usage path segments because throughout the execution how they are being happening now let us analyze variable count how it is being done so what is happening before it is entering the loop it is being defined let's say in the first line or the first node it is being defined the variable count then let's say we don't enter the while loop so outside of the loop it is being used and then killed let's say we have a situation where we enter the loop one time so what is happening to our variable count so variable is being defined then we entered the loop within the loop while loop the variable has been used and further again within that defined then again because we are only entering one time we are coming out and again it is being used and then it is being killed so the sequence for one time execution within the loop what is happening to count it is being defined used and again defined and used and then killed let us now think about let's say the loop executes for two times so what happens now it will be defined outside the loop and then inside the loop it is used defined and again it goes into the same loop so it will be used defined and it comes out of the loop after second time then it will be again used and then killed these are the possible sequences of the life cycle of define usage paths for the variable count now let us analyze the same thing for the variable called number so number based on our logic there when it is not going to the loop then it is doing defined then used and killed 
if it is going one time inside the loop it is being defined used again used then defined and used and killed if it is going two times inside the loop what is happening defined used used defined used used defined used and kill that is the sequence it's following so we have to analyze this du path segments for each variable with the execution cycle in mind now what we have to really look at is that if paths the pairs are like du u u du means define use u u is use then use use kill kill again define use define these are okay pairs there is no problem with any data flow issue there what are the problems anomalous pairs are define and define without using again you define it again define it then that is what we call a data flow anomaly and another type of anomaly is that define and kill without even using so if, whenever you look at in this kind of d use path segments if you see d immediately after another d or d d is a anomaly you have to immediately tell that and also if you look at a pair called d and k again it is anomaly and what are the likely defects if you look at some situations where you see kill and then kill that is fault and also you have a kill and use again then without defining you are directly using then it can be a fault so always paths must start with d definition and must end with kill so as and whenever we perform data flow analysis we study every variable in the logic and go through its cycle of execution and create the sequences possible sequences and then we look for any anomalous pairs or faulty pairs and that is how we find defects so if you are doing a manual examination of static testing you will have to do that otherwise tools will do that hope you have understood that in the next video i'll take few examples and we'll do exercise so if you have any questions please post them in the discussion forum and learn and have fun